Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 345, and we're starting a, a brief series I title Cosmic Culmination. I've been led to research activities that <clears throat> influence from the spiritual realm things that are taking place in the physical realm. Mm. The nations are being set up, the conditions on earth are reaching a point in which there's going to be a climactic shift in what we look at as a reality. And we want to take a look at the things leading up to this shift from the principles in the background, referring to the beings in the high regions of the heavens that are making, through the darkness element, events take place here on earth. Scripture indicates, after the fall of Lucifer, so we're going to go back to the time in which this begins, which is the fall of Lucifer. Scripture indicates after the fall of Lucifer and his organization, there was no authority to govern the secondary creation. All was chaos. <coughs> God, the person of Elohim, steps in. And initially cast down all authority, whether good or bad. Turn to Ezekiel 31, verses 16 to 17. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast them down to hell. Talking about Lucifer. With them to descend into the pit. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in neither parts of the earth. So he's talking about those elements that did not join in the rebellion. Those that were still loyal to him. They were cast down out of their positions. Yes. So we're understanding the choice and the best of Lebanon makes them authority. Yes. Okay. Lebanon is the name <coughs> for the government. Yes. Yeah. And they are instruments that are actively involved in uh, maintaining the positions in Lebanon. <coughs> Verse. 17, they also went down into hell with him, unto them that are slain with the sword, and they that were his arms, talking about his inner circle, that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. So all authority was dispatched out of governing that authority at that time. Having said that, Scripture indicates after Elohim stabilized the creation, he brought YHVH into a position of authority over the creation. Ezekiel 31, verse 15. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning, I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof, and the great waters were stayed. And I caused Lebanon 
to mourn for him and all the trees of the field fainted for him. Turn to Genesis, the first chapter. Verse 2. And the earth was without form <coughs> and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved. In the Hebrew it says, a Ruach Elohim Mahafet. Moved. It <coughs> basically uh, was in motion over the creation, bringing the chaos into stability. Moved upon the face of the water. So he he brought everything that was out of control back into a stability so that the creation was brought to a point in which it was at one time, uh, for the first time, cohesive. Mm. It's at this point that White VH is appointed the title of God. <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> so all the courses, everything was out of course. Yes. Okay. So what, what he did was he did a, a stabilization. Did he recreate or did he just fix what was broken? Or did he... He brought into a stabilization in the physical. He began to create in the spiritual. This is what you see here when it talks about light, that there be light. <clears throat> what that is, is it a reality that's brought out initially starts with darkness. He speaks light into the darkness. Then he divides the light from the darkness. You have two realities now. The one that has been brought to a degree of stability and a new reality that Elohim is working in to bring forth the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, so Lucifer fell in a reality that God had created. No, Lucifer fell into a <clears throat> region that already existed that God had taken the life out of and made it a dungeon, a prison. Not referring to the physical universe that was in chaos, referring to a spiritual realm for angels and individuals that were in a state of rebellion. So what, what I'm trying to get to, Mr. Jones, is is the restoration that was done a completed work or a partial work? Completed in the light, the light region, okay. not in the in the darkness region. The darkness region is still where it is, yeah. exactly as it was. The only difference is now it's stable. Right. <clears throat> he brings in YHVH to once it's stable to do some things to it to bring it back to a state in which it can become usable again, but not restored, just usable. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, what is your earth? Sure. So, having said that, we we're painting here a picture of the beginning of things leading to where we are now. Scripture indicates Elohim then turned over to YHVH and the Dawn Star hierarchy the administration of the secondary creation. Genesis 2, verse 4. Matter of fact, I get a clear picture. We're going to start in verse 1 and read down to verse 4. The heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. What heavens and what, what earth? The new heavens. The new earth. But it's in the spiritual realm of light. Not in the physical realm of darkness. It's in an eternal state. The darkness region is in a temporal state. So you have division. 
you see the division in Luke, the 16th chapter. Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus is in the eternal state of light. He's in a paradise region festooned with water and life forms. He's laying in Abraham's bosom being ministered to. The rich man is in this region in the spiritual hell where Lucifer and all the rest of the guys were thrown down. <coughs> Separated by this chasm. The chasm is what came into being when the Lord divided the light from the darkness. So we see verse 2, chapter 2, is he's completed all that now. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. So we find when the heavens and the earth were finished, what did Elohim do? He said, it is good. He pronounced if God says something is good, it can never become anything else but good. Because what He speaks is eternal. So it's still there, it's still good, it will always be good. The human race has been created, all the animals, all the, the, the herbs and everything that go forth in that region are there. The righteous, when they die, are going into that region in the place called Abraham's bosom, the place where the human race was created. Let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. At the point where Lucifer was the covering cherub, so his wings covered the throne of YHVH, as I understand it, mm -hmm. what title did YHVH have and was he God of the Earth at that point? Yes. Okay. But Lucifer, while still covering the throne of YHVH, was already corrupt? We hadn't yet become corrupt. No, it hadn't become corrupt. This was in the first day before his fall. I made the anointed cherub that covereth. So White VH is given the godship prior to Lucifer's fall. Sure. But from the heavens. He wasn't given custodian over the secondary creation. Okay. The Dawn Star hierarchy. Why it's VH were the highest gotcha. forms at that time. Gotcha. But you didn't take the extra work, as I describe it, until such time as the so Elohim gave it to him right. after new conditions came into being. Yes. Because of Abraham's righteousness, the place that people are being gathered in Abraham's bosom exists? <laughs> no. No. How did he get the title Abraham's bosom? Because Abraham was given custodianship over the humans that would go back into that region because of his relationship with <coughs> YHVH. Well, Lazarus is being ministered to by Abraham. Abraham is the, uh, the basic custodian of the chasm over this region of the human race. The human race. That's all, that it, it's all that's as far as it goes. It talks about he was gathered to his people. His people referring to the Adamic race created in Genesis 1, 26. To the righteous human race? Or only the righteous anybody? only the righteous can exist there. Okay. Well. So the <clears throat> but you're looking at two things. I don't want to go off into this, but I'll I'll, I'll take the time. Humans are there before they incarnate. Humans are there after they die. Mm. The humans that incarnate haven't incarnated yet have no Adamic personality as they do after they return back. Because they have to live a life on earth in which they perform certain things that will enable them to either go to the righteous state or go to the torment regions. So you have two groups. You will continue to have two groups until the time of the millennium. The time of the millennium, everybody that has not incarnated will have incarnated before the end of the millennium. So David was incarnated there? Yes. Okay. 
Everybody. So Elohim pronounced it as Abraham's bosom. YHVH probably did. Because YHVH has a run of the human region there. He has a run of what they do. Jesus says he's the God of the living. YHVH created the human race. YHVH is given custodianship of the human race until the time that the sons of God take up their authority over the human race. But that's just preliminary. Uh, we, we, we want to minimize the human race in this thing because what they're doing now is disqualifying themselves from any major decision-making situations at all. And it's going into the hands of the Luciferians. It's going into the hands of the Prototokos. But let's go on. I'm just giving you background here. So it's going to lead up to where we are now. You're answering my questions, Mr. Jones, and there's nothing greater than that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's go on. <clears throat> YHVH is given dominion over this. Genesis 4, verse 3. God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So Elohim ceases. The creation is complete. He's pronounced it good. What does he do now? What does he do? What does he do now? <clears throat> he ceases from that activity and turns it over to YHVH. Verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created by Elohim in the day that the Lord God, YHVH, made the earth and the heavens. Now the word made comes from a Hebrew term, asha, which has many different meanings. Where are you reading from right now? Genesis 2.4 okay. <clears throat> In the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. You see a differentiation here. Verse 4 says these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. This is referring to Elohim. Then it goes on, when the Lord God made just, about, just the opposite, the earth and the heavens. So it's giving us the understanding he has now been put in authority over the secondary creation, which <coughs> has been brought out of chaos, instability, made stable again, given into his hands in the dawn star hierarchy to develop. Now, what do we find here? The word Asa is in the day the Lord God made. Asa means made, it means did, it means prepared, it means came to pass. So YHVH brings into stability and function the secondary creation. He takes the vast regions that are brought into stability and makes them workable again. Elohim brings into the panorama of the star fields. YHVH puts them in motion so they begin to formulate from gas to light form. Yes. <coughs> YHVH was definitely involved in the original secondary creation. Yes. Okay. So he's got, he built it the first time, he can definitely repair it the second time. No, he can't. Not without the help of Elohim. He doesn't you, have the expertise. You mean bring it back to the state in which it was originally? He can never bring it back to the state it was Right, but that's what you're referring to. When he says repair it, you're talking about restore it to the original. Of course he can't, because 
Elohim is when he creates it. I said he brings it to a state of functioning. The great. Which is nowhere near what it, was what it originally was. The only ones that can bring it back to what it was is you and you. Amen. And me. Praise the Lord. And until that happens, the creation knows it. It's waiting for you and you and me to bring it back to the state of where it was originally Amen. functioning. You think that the <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yes. the Lord. But let's go on. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So YHVH brings it to a state of operation. You have the star fields coming into being, bringing light to those regions that have totally been in shadow of darkness all this time. They will never again experience. <clears throat> until the time of the sons of God, the pure light that they once exhibited, once had. But now they have a secondary, sustainable uh, mechanism. He brings into <clears throat> motion the great solar systems, aligning of planets, the galaxies, those things that festoon the universe with light. You have some binary systems, and you have other regions like what you have here with a single sun system. Mm -hmm. He's designed all of that. He takes Earth, which probably was a satellite to some greater uh, 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 body, and makes it a planet and puts the moon in proximity around it to enable it to, again, function. Mars is laying on its side. It's remaining that way. All the other planets look like pockmarked fishes and craters which they exactly do if you take a telescope and you focus on them they're wreckage <coughs> yes I think it's Saturn is, is reverse rotation Jupiter Jupiter yeah retrograde motion um, <coughs> Jupiter has moons that go in retrograde motion it also has moons that go in right motion YHVH did all that now the retrograde motion is as a result of the fall or as a result of the Partial restoration. Partial restoration. Mm. The design, what you have now, is nowhere near what it no, was true, before so. the fall. So we should understand that the retrograde motion is the solution to at least having something working. Well, I think it has to do with bringing stability to the planet. Mm. Uh, there are forces that enable the, 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 the celestial bodies you see to function. Those the causative forces are in the invisible realm. You can't see right. why they are. Okay. You can only see the result of what they do. Okay. Yes. So Saturn and Jupiter have many moons. Yes. Not, not binary, not, not even, you know, but 42 and 60. Yes. None of the moons are the size of our moon, though, except the larger moons like Titan and uh, some of the others. But the Earth, for its planet size, has got a gigantic yes. moon orbiting it, which it shouldn't have. <clears throat> All that is by design, by HPH. So having said that, you see, you begin to get the picture of the beginning of what currently exists. Now, <clears throat> what happens, scripture indicates YHVH then assigned authority positions to principalities to oversee the nations that Elohim had made. Correct <coughs> uh, Ezekiel 31. Ezekiel 31, 16. <clears throat> I made the nations to shake at the sound of its fall when I cast them down to hell with them that descend into the pit 
and all the trees of Eden, the choice and the best of Lebanon, all that drink water <coughs> shall be comforted in any of the parts of the earth. Why are the nation shaking? Because the authorities have been deposed from them, good and evil. <coughs> they are in a state of disarray. They have nobody to direct them. They have nothing stabilizing them. They are basically experiencing for the first time <coughs> the reality of chaos. Elohim brings it into stability. <coughs> then he concentrates on the new creation. Then he gives authority to YHVH and the Dawn Star hierarchy. YHVH then begins to assign positions of authority over the nations. And who does he assign positions of authority over the nations? Those that we call principalities. He chooses from the heavenly host individuals <coughs> to set up authority over the nations. So, just to make sure I understand, all of these choices, these positions, are what you would call second string, second string of positions. Yes. Those in the north, those in the, uh, the south, and anywhere else they may be behind the veil. Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 because everybody else. Everybody, good or bad, is out of action. So it sets the stage here for the preliminaries. Now... <coughs> so, just one more. Yes. Since Wayne 3 h chose them, did he have to choose... Well, I was about... I was, I was going to the point where since we know that the second stringers are also rotten to the core, at the point that YHVH chose them, one presumes that they were pure, pristine, and uncorrupted. Sure. Okay. It's so, now but be. Right. So what happened from the point of the fall, or the point of the um, appointment? You're jumping the gun. We're going to get to that. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, we got You're Sunday thinking too. in the line. Sounds yeah. too. <laughs> well, we know no, this is before Psalm 72. Something happened before Psalm 72. We're going we're gonna to address that. We're going to address that. We're going to address that. See, he doesn't calm me down. He just, just you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see the. Oh, let's get to the point. <laughs> we're building a case here. <clears throat> Scripture indicates YHVH assigned. Authority positions to principalities to oversee the nations. <clears throat> now, Elohim then made a region for all of them. Elohim then made a vast region for them to operate from. This region is called the North. Turn to Job 26, verse 7. <clears throat> He stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. The word empty there is tohu vabaru. So what it's talking about, after YHVH chooses the authorities, the second stringers that are going to oversee, Elohim makes an extension for them to congregate in to enable them to have the oversight over the creation. It's called the North. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with the sides of the North. Uh, right, right. That crossed my mind. So, coming back to Psalms 82. Mm -hmm. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> all in due time. All right, all right. And I think we will answer your, address your question. You might not even need to ask it. We shall see. Yes. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so you have here the administration, the timing, and the place. 
What you don't have at this point is the arrival of the crucible, the human race. You don't have the corruption of the individuals. You have the stage being set for things to take place later on that bring all this together. So, just making sure I'm understanding you. Okay. At this point, all of the second strings who have been appointed are pure and unfallen. Okay. Yes. Because they would have to be, wouldn't they? Yes. Right. Now, <clears throat> Scripture indicates this region, the north, is a lower descent from a high region called the sides of the north. Turn to Psalms 48, 2. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. <clears throat> so what happened is Elohim takes and extends from the primary creation into the secondary creation, this region called the north, so that the administrators will have a place in which, remember that the thing had been wiped out. They need to have a place that they can function in as a headquarters, a place of congregation, <clears throat> a place of administration that they can oversee from. So this is what takes place. Now, Scripture indicates the principalities in the heavens, <clears throat> like the Luciferians before them, became corrupted. Now, why did they become corrupted? Why did Lucifer become corrupted? They became corrupted, the inferences, by exposure to the darkness element. The same way humans become corrupted. Exposure to the darkness element. Now, we see, turn to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 12. <clears throat> For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So what we find here, darkness, the inference is <clears throat> that darkness basically presented an allurement to them. If they could control the darkness element, they could <clears throat> begin to exert power and authority that had not been given to them. Since the darkness element was, when they were pure and unfallen, greater than them, that's the expression I'm going to use. The influence of the darkness is greater than these second string of principalities. Mm -hmm. They become rulers of darkness at some later point. Who teaches them to be rulers of darkness? Darkness? Hmm. <coughs> Academic energy. Okay. They learn about its function, they learn about its properties, and they try to master it. Remember, they became rulers over the darkness element. What they didn't understand was that there was a side of darkness that would bring them into bondage to the darkness they thought they were ruling. Okay. The same thing is true. Turn to Jude. Right. <coughs> Just as we're turning, it's a similar concept to wizards and witches thinking that they can control 
sure. Luciferian elements, sure. not recognizing that they're the ones being controlled. Certainly. Mm. So what Lucifer happened, that's how he got pride. Sure. Here we go. Jude. Six. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. So the darkness <coughs> that they thought they were controlling ultimately became their prison. Mm -hmm. So darkness itself, I believe we studied this some time before, has consciousness, is sentient, and therefore is aware. Yes, it's intrinsically evil. Mm. Yes. And it's a one-way trip. Yes. <laughs> no repentance. Like coming back from that yes. one. Yeah. Uh, humans walk into darkness and uh, think <clears throat> that they're in light. The darkness affects their mind to the point where it creates a reality within them. Yes. That the being, usually Humans come into darkness because some being is manipulating them into that position where it can control them. And in that respect, the whole human race is in darkness and then realize it. So what you find, basically, is this thing is across the board. It affects men and angels and imprisons them and destroys them. Now, uh, we're going to probably do a lesson for it. I'm just going to touch upon it. Why is VH is immune to darkness? Explain. Uh, because the scripture tells us. Yeah, that's very useful, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, elaborate a little. <laughs> no, it says uh, in Psalms, I don't, won't take the time now to go into sure. it because it's too much of detraction. Sure. Why is VH dwells in darkness, uses darkness. When he he yes. uh, taking the children of Israel out of Egypt, darkness was the instrument that he used to be able to do it. Okay, okay wait a minute. Pillar of fire at night, cloud during the day. Mm hmm. Yes. What what darkness? He put darkness between the Egyptians and the Israelites. The Israelites were in light. The Egyptians were in darkness. <clears throat> Why GH manipulates darkness? Oh, for three days they couldn't see. They couldn't move. Yeah. It says uh, to him, darkness and light are the same, mm. at least in this level. So he's immune to that <clears throat> because he's created in the image of his creator. So doesn't that raise the, doesn't that, uh, raise the question, why would he have to eat of the tree of good and evil? Well, because the individual like Lucifer is craftier than YHVH. So that tree was giving him levels of craftiness that he had no giving him understanding of it how to mute the activities of the serpents how to combat the activities of the serpents craftiness <coughs> which he couldn't do hmm. it was him that planted it it was who white what fish there? that planted it that planned what the tree the tree oh yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay so now it obviously had to be available to him, and YHVH, or I mean Elohim, made it available to him? Sure. Put him in charge of the secondary creation. Okay. Well, see, the th that's brilliant, you know. I mean, you're going to give a, a pure being an unpure region to rule over, and, uh, you know, eh, it was a little, little seedling. You, you might need that. Well, actually, the, no, the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil came out of the subterranean region, along with everything else. So the earth. Yeah. Which he was given dominion over after the fall of Lucifer. Because everything else he did, took came out of the earth. What's interesting is, as we're talking, I'm thinking about the waters. Mm -hmm. Who sided with Lucifer. Right. Again, right. Why didn't he give you a little something-something to 
why a pH. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> so we get the overall beginnings of a picture here of things that are happening. Now, <clears throat> scripture, taking what you've just said a little further, scripture indicates YHVH saw his creation taken over and enslaved by his enemy, Lucifer. Genesis 3.13 He got blindsided, really. Who told you you were naked? Mm. <laughs> Eve. <laughs> she gets blamed for everything. <laughs> Adam didn't hesitate to throw under the bus. Yeah. 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So at that point, Weisvied saw his creation <clears throat> come from under his authority, under the authority of the manipulating serpent. I still have to come back to the thought that since White Ridge is immune to darkness mm -hmm. and he's able to manipulate dar uh, darkness, why could he not manipulate something to combat um, Lucifer and his horde? Because darkness <coughs> is the instrument of a creature that was crafted to be wiser and shrewder than than a YHVH. Okay. Okay. In this element, YHVH cannot gainsay the craftiness of the serpent. So then, when we read and think about Lucifer's potential, shouldn't we be looking at it in terms of how crafty and wiser and shrewder that he was? Is that the potential that we should be paying attention Well, it depends to? on the background. Well, I'm saying this because the father created him for a particular purpose. Yes, but the, pur yes, but the purpose um, was manyfold. Lucifer didn't do just one thing. Sure. When he was the anointed sheriff that covered, he didn't have to be shrewd or wise okay. or anything. But his potential to do that made him beyond anybody else that could do it. Took two cherubs after he fell to do the thing that he was doing, and that had nothing to do with his fall. Mm. When he fell, he was able to hone his crafts beyond anything any created being could do, including YHVH. Is there any indication that uh, Satan now believes, currently, what he now believes, that he has been influenced and befuddled by darkness, by the darkness element? Oh, sure. Or does he still think that he has control over it and all things? No, he, know, he knows his limitations. Okay. But he would never admit it. That sounds familiar. Yes. <laughs> Just like he, he knows he's defeated. He'd never admit it. He's going to let everybody believe that he's got uh, the final say soul for everything. Right. That's his stock and trade. But you know certain people, when they look in the mirror, they lie to themselves. And evidently he's in and that they, group. They reach a point where they believe they're lying. Yeah. Well, he's a father of lies, and so mm. those that act the same way are... Influence the same way. Yes. Now, <clears throat> we said that YHVH experiences creation exploited by those <laughs> also he had authorized to correctly administer the creations. In other words, the principalities that he put in yeah. authority also took over his creation. Mm -hmm. Psalms 82, verses 1 to 5. As we're turning, should we understand that while he had the authority to appoint them, he didn't have the authority to remove them? That's right. Mm. <clears throat> Psalms 82, verse 1 to 5. Nor did he have the authority to deal with them. The ones that he did deal with, the gods, little g, are the basically the nations under the principalities. 
But he says, I'm going to uh, deal with the gods of Egypt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't these guys. It's the ones the, of the nations that these guys were ruling over. Right. Psalms 82, 1 to 5. God standeth in a congregation of the mighty. Congregation of the mighty is in the north, which is stretched out over the empty place. So you have this vast region of administration, probably beautiful, the fellow we brought into being, with all these beautiful, uh, if you could see them, they, they look glorious, arrayed in their robes. I had a dream about them one night. Um, they're human, humanoid, uh, very regal, uh, handsome, some are bearded, uh, long hair, and uh, they stride when they walk, and each one has a particular ability, a power, authority, and whatnot. Uh, so they re still retain their glamour even though they're fallen. Right. Let's go on. <clears throat> God stands in the congregation of the mighty, he judges among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. He's literally pleading with them. That's all he can do. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Now you can see why he's consistently saying, they'll know that I am the Lord. They'll know that I am the Lord. He's trying to get his creation back under his authority. He can't do it. So the verse 7, but you shall die like men and fall like young princes. Is this a judgment being spoken out to them or is it merely a prediction? This is referring to ultimately what darkness is going to do to them, the same thing it's going to do to the humans. Right, okay. So the implication is the, uh, these uh, principalities don't comprehend that the darkness will do that to them. No. Or uh, they don't want to look at it. I'll give you the scripture that mm. points that out. Okay. Turn to Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25, verse 26. And all the kings of the north, remember what we just built up, mm -hmm. what the north is, who is populating it, all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another. So what will happen, <coughs> darkness is going to be used to bring them to distraction, just like it will the humans on earth. Right after they fall, notice what it says, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, this falls. Their empire, the thing that they built, the pseudo-reality is going to crack and fall and crumble along with the repercussions here on earth with the human race. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is the judgment that he's pronouncing with them. He says, you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. In other words, you, just like Lucifer and his, his uh, inner circle were imprisoned in the heart of the earth, so will you be. You're going to fall, you're going to be imprisoned, just like they were. Now, he doesn't know that they're going to be released at this time, mm -hmm. Lucifer and his cohorts, to freely roam the creation again. But later on, probably by this time, he might realize it, I'm not sure. But there you get the beginnings of what we're heading into. Yes. So in the heart of the earth, the earth that we're in right now, mm -hmm. no, it's not going to be translated into the new earth. What's well, not going to be translated? 
part we're talking about. Hell. No. No. Hell is going to be right where it is for the time that it's going to be, and then ultimately it's going to <clears throat> be translated into the torment regions of the lake of fire where everybody that's currently in hell is going to be there. Now what we find YHVH struggles all he can do is this turn to Exodus 20th chapter verse 1 to 5 God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of any that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, a place where the nations are. The water under the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the sons, unto the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate. That's all he can do is make a commandment for his people not to go after the other guys. Other than that, he's powerless. So the sea princes are part of the nations. The sea princes are... Uh, Principalities. So they're, they're kings then? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was beginning to think they were part of the nations based on what you said, but okay. No, they rule uh, over the nations, right. or the life forms underneath them. Gotcha. So here we see basically a build up. You're going to see stuff happening in the <coughs> heavens as disruptions take place more and more. You're going to see result disruptions on the earth more and more mm. and it says it's going to reach a point where the kings of the north are going to go one on one against each the other the earth. under the darkness influence mm. going to die like men men are going to go mad so will they so anyone encountering and becoming in bondage to that darkness element will never ever have objectivity to understand that they are in darkness. So therefore we understand that Satan, which was my earlier question, cannot, can, can never know this, his state because he's corrupt in that bondage. Yeah, it says there's no truth in him. He can't comprehend truth, objectivity. Mm. He can gauge, but he can't fully understand. He doesn't have the capacity to. There's no light in him. Which means that he put himself in a state, such a deleterious state, of any created being that ever existed. Totally immersed in darkness. Because of the potential that he had to incorporate it in his being. 